Okay, YouTube, quick note here. I've disassembled a carburetor for somebody. It is not matched to the other carb. That's less what this video is about, but what I wanted to show you is that some carburetors have non-adjustable needles and at the same time, non-adjustable jets. Uh, so to explain what I mean, in the early CD150 carburetors uh, and also in, I guess, CD175, so the, er the early CD Stromberg carburetors, this jet is not fixed. It moves up and down. You can still see there's uh, threads in there. And what the company did was they just sort of put in this plug with this O-ring uh, to just kind of cap it off, basically, because later on they moved to a different, uh, different style. But for about a year, uh, that you could get a Triumph, and I suppose a number of other cars, where this jet did not move up and down. It was an attempt to kind of keep people from uh, messing with the settings and control emissions a little bit. Uh, so keep in mind that that happened at one point. And then at the same time, uh, or rather not at the same time, uh, Triumph went, I should say Zenith Stromberg, went to an adjustable needle. And the way that it worked was you would have a tool like this, an Allen key basically went down the top. There was a threaded adjuster, right? So that would fit down the top. You would turn it with the Allen key, and this is threaded, and it would pull the needle up and down because on the side, uh, the needle would have a flat spot, or the, the piece that carried the needle would have a flat spot, and there would be a screw that goes in. So the needle wouldn't be able to twist. It could only go up and down as you threaded something in or out of it. Uh, you basically had uh, this adjuster was a puller, because this also couldn't move up and down. So if you tightened it, the only thing you could do is draw the, the adjuster and the needle closer together, which would raise the needle. And there was a uh, retainer on the top, so the adjuster couldn't back out. Uh, so if you loosened the adjuster, again, the adjuster can't move up and down, so the only thing that could happen was it would spread uh, apart by having more threads, and it would force the needle down into the cavity, so you could adjust the needle. But for about a year, you, you did not have an adjustable needle. You had a fixed needle, like this one, which you notice doesn't have any threads, so it just sits in there and does not move up and down, and also a fixed jet. Pretty stupid. It is not adjustable at all. And so the it, well, I guess technically it is adjustable. What you would have to do would you would be, you would take out this air piston, and you would loosen. Let me show you this screw. You would loosen it and manually move the needle very slightly up or down. Not as much as I'm doing here. I'm exaggerating, but you would manually move it maybe a sixteenth or a thirty-second of an inch, put it all back together, and then try again, and see if your mixture was better. So for about a year, that was the only way to adjust the carburetors. Where it becomes a problem is uh, if you are changing altitudes. So if you start at the bottom of a mountain range and you're driving up to the top, the air is going to thin out, it's going to be richer, and so you need to lean out your carburetors trouble is you can't do that because you have to disassemble your carburetors to get at it and so this is a problem uh, and I guess what you can do if you can find another air piston you can find a, an adjuster and you can find a needle the adjuster and the needles you can still buy but the air pistons you can't and so if you can find a junk carburetor with an air piston that is meant for use with an adjustable needle you'll be able to tell because on the tool, you'll notice a little piece there, and sometimes there's one on the other side. That is meant to slot in, and it will find its location so that it can't twist. And this part of the tool is meant to keep the piston from turning, because the piston, because of these holes and because of the way the diaphragm connects, uh, the piston should not be turning. So this is meant to hold it in place, and the Allen key goes down to make the adjustment on the needle. So that's why you get a two-part tool, and this air piston uh, is not going to work with an adjustable needle because the hole's the wrong size. So, uh, not sure if maybe that's a piece that could be drilled or reamed out. I don't know, but uh, the later ones were a different design. And so, if you could find another air piston from a carburetor that's otherwise junk, 
um, you can install it and then you can have an adjustable needle. The other thing that you can do is press out the jets. I have not done this so I don't have instructions for you but you can press out the jet and then you can install an adjustable jet on the bottom and that will effectively be the same thing because what you're doing is you are having the needle either fit farther in or not as far into this jet. If you raise or lower the needle, that's going to adjust the mixture in exactly the same way as if you raise or lower the jet. And uh, most SUs uh, are adjusted by raising or lowering the jet. And most of the Strombergs that you'll see anyway, the Zenith Strombergs, adjust by adjusting the needle. Uh, since probably about 1970, I think. I, I want to say right around there. So um, anyway, that's how these adjust and you will find around 1968-ish uh, that you will have a fixed needle and a fixed jet. So just something to be aware of. Watch out for that. Hope that helps. Uh, if you've got questions, post them in the comments below. Thanks, guys.